Dave Marshall is on the line now. Hey, Dave, are you in Sanctuary Cove? I am. Um, is, it, is that which version was that? Doc Mason or Dave Lesson? It's it's uh, it's oh that song. Gold, Gold Coast, the Angels. I think it's Doc. It just bought all of these uh, all of these psychedelic experiences just come back. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we played that for you. Appreciate that. We played it for you. Did you go to Bathurst at the weekend? Uh, I tried not to. I was as far away from Bathurst. No, I'm not as far away. But but I went to another spiritual home, like 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 Bathurst, for, for other reasons. But no, it was too wet. Yeah, they it had problems, like, didn't you, they? Well, if you want to, if you want to, um, if you'd like to participate in aquatic adventures like that, then you know you can head to. New Zealand or Wales. Hey, we're dry. Or, Come on. Come on. Darwin, 36 degrees today, and they had 136 mils the other day. Storm season has certainly started there. But yes, the shootout at Bathurst was sacrificed on Saturday because they just, it was too wet. The yeah. splooshing across grass was so dangerous. And there was, certainly for a time there, they thought that uh, because of that crazy weather that we're having at the moment, mm. blood warnings galore, yeah. um, that, uh, that it, it, it may well, may not go ahead on Sunday. But apart from the constant appearance of that safety car, um, they did get through the race, um, which is quite surprising. And, uh, and mm. you really can't expect anything these days. I know we've been preconditioned from COVID to now expect Anything may not happen at any stage for whatever reason. Festival, events, mm. um, whatever, because uh, and now it's the, the, the floods and, uh, and crazy weather that causes these sorts of things to come up proper. Because mm. I always remember Bathurst as being, you know, it was, it was always golden weather. It was, it was always settled and hot and that's just what the race was known for. And, and it's like to hear that uh, everything's disrupted is, uh, well, it's disappointing, isn't it, you know? Uh, now, 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 Leanne, have you actually been there during the great race? Uh, I've been near it. I've been in a place called Orange. Um, uh, d- during the race? No, no. Now, was it, was it? Cold in orange, and that's a, because my memories of going to Bathurst for the Great Race. Yes, the year Dick Johnson won it um, back in the nineteen eighties uh, was that it was absolutely very cold and miserable. It oh, really? Can be. Oh. Those visual images of the gentleman sitting atop <laughs> Mount Panorama. Yes, sitting on top of the eskies, slabs going down there, gussets. You know, instantly doesn't mean. But it's hot and thirsty work. It just means it's just celebration. Mm. Well, okay, oh, no. maybe maybe I looked at things with rose tinted spectacles, perhaps. Well, but, it can, it can be. Know. Look, Bathurst is, is, is the, it, it, it's the Highlands, um, you know, west of Sydney, and and it does get those cold westerlies coming across the plains, mm. um, hitting them in October, that time of the year, um, which is um, yes. Can can be okay. Um, the sun can roll across, but can be quite cool and not pleasant at all. But certainly, um, and it snows up there, um, Mount Panorama. Yeah, right. that's true. Um, You're right. Certainly gets a few, few snow dustings there through the year. Not exactly like down there in South Beatland, but a little bit of dusting of snow. But it's, I mean, so this year it's it's uh, okay. They had the hiccups. They had to. They had to. Uh, they, they finally got it to go ahead, which is great. I mean, I just remember seeing a story <laughs> a couple of nights ago, and I think there was a whole, probably, uh, well, a certain section of New Zealand society had rocked up to Bathurst, and they were like, "Oh, flood warning? No, we didn't even know, and we're fine. We'll be, we'll be sweet, mate. We're, we're just happy to be, be here, you know, worshiping at the." At the you know the altar of uh, of of car racing because Bathurst has got that reputation, hasn't it? It's a it's a great race. It's a holy sport of motorsport. It's it's the uh, it's the supercars. It's the it's the penultimate race um, for mm. supercars um, in Australia, and and everything leads towards it. It's like the Melbourne Cup. Yeah, um, in, I was going to say spring racing carnival. Everything leads towards that. Will that be a washout this year? That is something that we're all looking forward to see because it's not only the race. That you know the wet weather sacrifices. It also makes it you know well quite a spectacular event um, in the bird cage uh, for the uh, the fashion events. You know the mounting yard. Um, it, hundred hundred thousand people at Flemington can be um, quite the ask. And there have been years that I've been at Flemington mm. um, during Derby Day or Oaks Day that it has been you know very wet and muddy. 
Right. Um, and so the question is, is it going to be like that this year? Is Melbourne Cup going to be a washout? Oh, I hope Or is not. it going to be a visually spectacular <laughs> feast of brown mud colour? Everybody mm. gets a chance to wear boots. Boots instead of high heels, those heels. Oh, it won't stop the women uh, dressing up to the nines, but has, has it ever been uh, cancelled or postponed, the Melbourne Cup, from what you remember? I don't believe, I don't believe so. I believe it carried on. The time has varied, has been brought forward or brought back, or, or pushed mm. back, depending on sort of squalls um, that have pushed through, but I don't believe um, mm-hmm. the Melbourne Cup has been postponed. Mm. Um, just on a mere hint of weather, like a football grand final, you know, to take a very <laughs> serious event, like Bathurst, you know, and they did change the rules for Bathurst. Mm. They ensured that they weren't going to, you know, get out there and be, even though there were very many Thursday, Friday, I know that, uh, that uh, they'd already set up a special channel on pay television for the, the, the Bathurst channel, had already begun a week before. So I was watching that on the farm last week. Um, but they'd already come out with the rules and they'd rewritten the rules to make sure that they could have, uh, have tyres that had much more grip um, and so they could push the water away and not aquaplane so much. And so they were allowed three times as many tyres, I believe, as, uh, as what they were previously. Right. Um, so they were rewriting the rules to make sure it was safer yeah. um, for, for everyone competing and all the little kitties, of course, on the side of the track washing. Mm. Well, look after the uh, yeah, well, I mean, heck, there were some mighty crashes, like the stuff I saw uh, from Bathurst. Uh, yeah, lots of spinning cars, uh, drivers uh, having to veer off the track onto the grass to get out of the way. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, you wouldn't want to be standing too close. I wouldn't let my little child uh, that close to the track. But, yeah, I don't know, though, I haven't had a look at the television figures to see actually if pe- more people turned on mm. because they thought it was going to be, you know, a dodge and slam Crash yeah. spectacular, monster <laughs> truck spectacular. <laughs> like stock um, cars. Or whether people were, or people were treating it as uh, with the respect that uh, the uh, supercars deserve. Yes. Uh, you know, exactly. they had a form- formula, formula One of Australian motorsport, mate. Mate, of course it is. But, I mean, how, how many... There was a good turnout, wasn't there? There were a lot of people there. Well, it's like, because people are desperate for entertainment. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> desperate to get out there. They've been locked away with all the little saving up their little pennies for two years, or COVID, two and a half years, and now desperate to get out of the country. Um, which is, you know, compromises getting a passport, getting a ticket to leave the country, getting a, you can go to New Zealand. It's not the easiest thing in the world um, because there's just this pent up demand to do things. So any special event. I mean, I'm, I'm they're mowing the golf course here at Sanctuary Cove in front of me at the moment. They're obviously expecting big crowds today. Um, but the events are back on, you know, major events. People are out there partying. Mm. Thing is, it's, it, it could almost be normal. Um, again, maybe. <laughs> so, maybe. Maybe. Tell me, I maybe. heard I heard something about there being a bit of a spike in COVID cases in Victoria and there might be a few more restrictions. Have you heard anything about that, Dave? No, look, the, the big news that they're pushing today is the fact that it may well just be to cover up the fact that there was another bit of a spike in mm-hmm. the numbers um, because they're not reporting them daily. They're reporting them weekly, which is, you know, something to, 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 to make sure that the punters are just not too obsessed um, about the fear factor anymore. Mm. We only use fear in moderation, you know. Two years, that's moderation enough. Now they've got to stem back the fear. So even though things might not be happy and rosy, get out there, get sick, um... You know, don't stay at home anymore. Uh, yeah. Don't need to isolate. Just get back out there. You've got COVID. You tested positive. Good <laughs> on you. Because today they get amongst it. You can go to. You can get amongst it. You can go to <laughs> pharmacists across the east coast and go and get your new booster. Because now you can get boosted. You get boosted for all, all the other variants that you couldn't get boosted for before. Before you could only get the original juice. Yeah. Now mm-hmm. you get the vari- variable juice booster. <sighs> So it means you're getting a bit of ginger in there and beetroot and spirulina or something, I suppose, <laughs> um, in your arm to make sure that you can fight off because I know people, they say to you now, oh, I tested positive a week ago. How do you feel about that? And it's like, what do you say? And I know, I was, I was on the Rex aircraft down at the Gold Coast Saturday and yeah. I, there's only three of us on the aircraft wearing face masks. Really? And it makes you feel, yeah, and, and, and I know I've got grey hair and so it does make me feel extra nana. <laughs> you know, getting on there yeah. and sitting down and you're looking around all the young and hip people, you know, with their influencer lips and that going to the Gold Coast. <laughs> um, and and it's, it's like, oh, right, oh, fair enough. And it makes you feel your age. 
You know, it does. Which is good coming to the Gold Coast because there's a lot more of us here. Absolutely. Oh, I know. Well, so are you there on holiday? No. Nothing. Life is not a holiday. No. Not at all. <laughs> working, work, even working on the farm wasn't a holiday. Even though we went yeah, work right. And we didn't work at all because it rained. And so it was beautiful and lush. Right. And English. And we've never seen... I was looking at photos from every year that we go. And it's like, it's never been like this, never been like this, never been like this. Yeah. Um, green and lush and fantastic. And it's just like, oh, yeah, we've got we to gotta hose out the shed today and make sure it's like, no worries, and do this. Oh, it's blown from the east. We're going to have to stay home and do nothing. No. And oh, it's fair enough. So, no, it was, it, was, it was lovely to get a bit of a break, but, but not actually contributed to anything meaningfully active, like, you know, working with six testicles and things like that. <laughs> for, for, <laughs> fortunately or sadly, I think, so, depending on where it is. So, so you're... Uh, you, no, no, but you, aren't, you at some, aren't you at some luxury resort, you know, having a lovely time? In, no, Intercontinental Hotel. I've just arrived here to have lunch with a, a former leading sort of executive of news media. I took oh. up on gossip and things like that, so okay. secret six school stuff. Um, <laughs> but it has come down from much the same in Brisneyland this morning. Um, Brisneyland, that's I, I, good. I like this. Brisneyland, very good. But it is. Brisneyland. <laughs> it's, like, it's like one of those fantastic theme rides <laughs> because you've got these tunnels... That, like, you can imagine, if you're a bank robber in Brisbane, you'd be thinking, where am I going to go? Where's my... Because there's tunnels that just appear out of nowhere. Woof, you disappear down this one. That's like true. the olden days with those things in, 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 in shopping, in the old stores, you put them in. Oh, I remember down. those. And, and you like, screw the top. Brisbane, and, yeah, yeah. Ex 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 Brisbane's like that. That's Brisbane. You've got, like, <laughs> you turn around and oh, you suck down to this Anzac tunnel. <laughs> or the legacy tunnel. <laughs> Oh, it's amazing. It's this adventure that you can't experience. And it, I went. I actually went to Brisneyland for a, for a friend's concert. And you being a famous musician and all, um, you know how important it is to have your friends' support oh, yeah. um, in, your, in your music career. And you count on them, right? Yeah. So this, this, this very old dear friend of mine um, in, a, in a famous Brazilian band, um, the Bossa Nova Santa Club, we're doing this 25th anniversary concert nice. at the Powerhouse yep. um, at, New, at, at New Farm in Brisbane. Do you know how many times in 25 years I've been along to support? Oh, probably band? once, twice. Correct. Correct. Once. once. Terrible. <laughs> and so to be able to go and support and see that and experience that was beautiful because I flew in a Brazilian drummer, especially from uh, Rio for it. And so that was, was marvellous. And so to be able to slip back into Brisbane, get into those tunnels, and then slip up and do some sort of family diplomacy um, in, in, of all places, Gympie, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of, people think it's like deliverance country, you know, now, 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 the banjos start playing. And, and, and my, my mother was born north of there, bless her, and, um, ah. I'm a, and I sort of went to do a bit of family diplomacy, sort of re-establishing contact with long-lost relatives, which is always an adventure. Um, and marvellous experience and wonderful, heartfelt, loving, all of that. But Gimpy on itself, it's great because it's part of those wonderful, unique things. Just tucked away to the north of the Sunshine Coast, Noosa Heads, very close, only half an hour's drive. Beautiful place. But Gimpy has, Gimpy has, and it's a gold mining town, very historical. Yeah. Um, you know, they had the gold rush in, in, in Victoria, but Queensland gold was Gimpy. Um, but, but around there, quite an interesting place. And they have now the Gimpy... Country music muster every Ooh. August, right? And driving driving out of Gympie, it took me aback, and I had to turn around and go and do a loop to see the billboard promoting it, because it it, it, it and they've left it up there because it was in August, and so they're a bit slow taking it down. But there's reasons because their positioning statement for the, the music muster really sums up the community. Uh -huh. and it's a lush, you know. Much green and beautiful at the moment, but their 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 mascot is a crow, a black crow. Mm. And of course, the black crow and the sound of the crow was what Graham Kennedy, the first comedian in Australia, to to get away with using the F word on television by doing a crow call. And so they've got this big crow and the yippy music music muster, and it's got F A. R-R-K, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's their, that's their poster. That's their um, promo sort of slogan. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> and, you know, oh, it's, I took it as like, oh, it sets them up 
so beautifully for the wonderful people in the community. Can you send me a photo um, of that? That's very cool. I, I, I will. It's mm-hmm. worth putting on, on, just sharing that around because it's just it's one of those beautiful things that, that, that you escape from Gimpy and, <laughs> and, and, and get back down to, to, to Nisa and, and go, I need to chill. And Nisa is quite <laughs> extraordinary. I, yeah. haven't, I, I went to used to go on family holidays on the Nusa River, mm. which was infested with sand flies. It actually reminds me of where I'm sitting at the moment. Mm. Sanctuary Cove is a great testament of Queenslanders' abilities to turn sand fly infested swamps <laughs> into incredible world class resorts, much like Dubai. <laughs> right. Exactly the same. The Arabs had the, the, had the same deal. Sanctuary Cove and Noosa Sound is built on sand fly swamps. You're selling you it. You're selling there. it. Not? Unbelievable. No, it was humming. I tell you what, I went from Tawanton mm. to Noosa Heads along that strip. Yeah. And it was heaving with waterfront restaurants and everything else going off late for Sunday afternoon. Mm. And it was like, wow. And it's all the people who have, you know, the Victorian money that's retired there and having a lovely time mm. giving back. But Noosa Heads, by comparison, which is a little more gay, and it's a bit like cross between <laughs> Turak and Double Bay with all the, and the, the paving, all the, the footpaths paved mm. beautifully. It's polished. It's, a, it's like marble. Mm. And, you know, you walk up onto the beach and there's like a boardwalk and you don't have to go onto the beach. It's a, but Noosa, Noosa Heads, is, it's, it's like the, the very most gold coast of Italy, but put in a, one, one beach. Um, but marvellous place. Oh, um, I, to we, we used Queenstown. to holiday there a lot. You know, like every year we'd, we'd be jumping on a plane, a direct flight from Queenstown to, uh, to Brizzy. I think those have only just started up again, which, which is good. But, um, yeah, I used to love um, going to Noosa at this time of year because we always felt that we were still very much in a, in a get out of winter, early spring phase. And we'd get over there and we'd be like, you know, typical Kiwis, uh, get to the, before we'd even got to the car park at, the, at Brisbane Airport, we'd be like throwing off all our layers and just going, wow, so hot, <laughs> you know, because we're so used to the cold and it was just, great and um all those great the thing that struck me about that part of the world is the is the very um uh how would you call it um noisy birds it's not a great word but i'm, I'm tr- you know the bird oh, the bird sounds what are those um now do you know do you know the ones it's a very there's a couple of things queensland the mm. sun comes up very early because mm. daylight saving doesn't happen in queensland right because the, when i voted on daylight saving in queensland many many years ago in a referendum the the successful campaign against introducing daylight saving in Queensland was that, A, it will fade the curtains if there's an hour extra of sunlight. Is that what they and, thought? <laughs> and, and, B, the cows, the dairy cows, will have to get up earlier. And that will just, it just doesn't work right. Mm-hmm. You can't do that. Mm-hmm. So... A bit like shifting stone hens, you know, for, uh, for, for those, in those days you could convince Queenslanders anything. So it never happened. So the sun comes up here. It's great because New Year's, when, when everyone's party at New Year's and everything else, oh, stay up till sunrise. Yeah, rock on, rock on. Sunrise is a quarter to four. Quarter to four. Quarter to four. So the sun will, and, but because of where the sun comes from, at various times, it comes from the east or the northeast, so it's very warm, mm. and it gets very high very fast. Yeah, it's not like sitting on the you know on the horizon there. Hello, I'm starting the day. <laughs> no, it's poof, up there and at it, and it's harsh. And so people who are on the Gold Coast absolutely manked after New Year's, and they're they're at half past four in the morning after just passing it now before they're feeling the heat. By the, by the time it's nine o'clock, they're cooked. Oh, so it's serious. Yeah. The birds are cooked as soon as the sun rises and the warmth of the earth rises. Mm. Brisbane birds and Queensland birds go bananas. Mm. And it is a very particular thing. In South Australia, it's very gentle. We're on the farm and, you know, sun mm. comes up mm. and then the birds come along. It's a bit more like New Zealand, isn't it? You know, South Australia. It's very, very sophisticated in mm. that form. You know, mm. nothing to offend you too much. Come home too late. Got to get up early. You know, no. Queensland... Bam, you're into it. Go large. So it's very large. You were right. Actually, Dave, it, t- it reminds me of a great little joke uh, about uh, cultural differences between New Zealanders and Australians. Can I throw this one at you? You've probably heard it before. Are you ready? Please. Are you ready for this? Oh, yeah. What do you call a sophisticated Australian? A New Zealander. Ah! It's so old. Isn't that terrible? 
It's probable. But look, you're talking about <laughs> You're not laughing, you. though. I was just, it's a very old I'm joke. Laughing, it's a very bad I'm one. I'm laughing on the inside. I'm laughing <laughs> on the inside. The, 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 you guys fly here, and it was. Noosey yesterday it was 20 degrees, but it was quite humid. And so you could walk, walk around, and even though it was sort of stormy occasionally and drizzling and stuff, it was like, oh, yeah, it'll dry off in a second because it just it warms you out. Got to Brisbane. It was quite cool um, last evening. Interestingly, flying from South Australia to Melbourne, when we landed in Melbourne, transiting back to Sydney last week, mm. it was 14 degrees when we landed in Melbourne. And we walked outside and walked outside and thought, wow, everyone's wearing T-shirts. Right. And, 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 and it's like, it's 14 degrees. It's cold. I'm wearing a, I'm yeah. wearing a puffer jacket. I'm like, yeah, right, <laughs> eh? what's going on here? Yeah. And I messaged this mate of mine. I said, what's going on here? It's 14 degrees and everyone's wearing T-shirts. And he goes, mate. Every day over 14 degrees in Melbourne is a celebration. You've got to be happy about that. And so they do. And everyone wore their special T-shirts to the airport in celebration of getting out of that. Of the fact um, that... Going elsewhere. Oh, how beautiful. How, how great. Mm-hmm. It's a great city, Melbourne, but, it, you know, like it's not... Yeah, very, very hot, very extremely hot and very kind of cold. It's a bit like that here in Queenstown. It's funny, I went for a walk yesterday and I thought, oh, it's so warm. It's like 17 degrees, which is not much, wearing you know, like a, a sleeveless vest, and I see uh, visitors on the track, and conversely, they're like you, Dave, they're like, you know, I saw some Japanese people, jackets, scarves, hats, and they're looking at me like, uh, must be a local, you know, um, but yeah, we do, we get excited at the smallest, tensiest amount of heat. Hey, we need to talk about the New South Wales floods and, and all that whole eastern seaboard, and I've got a great Hoodoo Guru song lined up, so you call to Hang, hang Five and we'll play this song. And come back and talk. Absolutely. Um, beautiful. Okay, so this is... Uh, before... It, yeah, as you were. No. Before... Too long. No, 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 no. Did you have no, a point to make before no, which, the Hoodoo no, Gurus? I don't know which track. I just thought you might have had a magic track one, but so, please. Well, I've got What's My Scene. Do you know it? Oh, uh, even better. Good. You like that? Yeah. Okay, stand by, Dave. All right, this is uh, the Hoodoo Gurus and also a special request for our resident posty punk, Ian. Ah, I hope <laughs> if this plays now. After that big build up, here we go. Do you remember that video, Dave? It's a real goodie. Uh, I do. It was pretty insane. Mm. But that was Dave Faulkner's favourite track, you know. Oh, I love that. Was it really? Of all of them, because, because, because he thought it was really clever because it had two different choruses. And not just one. Oh, okay. Well, I, I, so he, yeah. That was, that was, a, that was obviously the sophisticated New Zealander. <laughs> That's such a bad joke. Such a bad joke. It really is. It's, it's great. It's great when you get away telling dad jokes and mum jokes these days. Isn't it? Oh no. Yeah, well, yeah. it's yeah, right, well, it's my uh, age. It's just my age. See, so I can. You can just say, "Oh, look," you know. That's just that's just awful. Hey, the who does? No, you're talking. You're talk, you, mm. Sorry, you're talking about your mum and before you know they've canned male, female coming into Australia. They've say again. So no more female has been blocked to Australia. If you're sending Christmas presents to people in Australia, please, we need every care kit you can send. Um, send it by email um, because there's been so many because the drug market was. All over airmail, and they mm. obsessed on airmail for so many years. And right. they realised, oh, oh, hang on, they're not looking at anything coming in on seamail. And they bring it all through one port in Australia. And oh. so they're a bit stretched. And so they've just got this big backlog. So it says, no more, they're not doing anything else. So it's like blocking everybody coming to Australia during COVID. Now they're doing it with mail because of the <laughs> illegal substances and banned items. Okay. So there are guns, drugs, knives, money, whatever, um, email. So send by email, please. Um, right. Not that I'm promoting any particular air company or whatever, but it's just the practical nature. Well, yeah, that's that's crazy. So no no shipping. No shipping of any goods what? because because well, there's no, been so much actually, illegal. But the mail, not in the mail. No. Not in the mail. Okay. So those people abusing our, our former Queenie's stamp, you know, for, mm. for their own purposes. Mm-hmm. No, no. Don't do it. So send it, send it by air. Don't send it by sea. Not to so Australia. You know, you yeah. Par pa Avignon. Remember that high school French? Yes, I do. Yeah, mm. yeah, totally. By, okay. By that, so what what kind of stuff we, we has there been an increase in? I mean, are they just talking illicit drugs or or everything? Oh, uh, lots of everything. Mm. Um, but it's interesting. All little different communities are. are, are, are 
hit by it the most were all the poor countries. So people who'd send, who are used to writing letters and then taking six months to get there, mm. like the Polish community was gutted because they're like, everything comes by mail because, you know, quite a poor Eastern, Eastern European country, so the way that they... So border force, just in their power, just so, no, no more, can't do this. So, yes, prohibited mail item. Mm. Okay. So drugs, knives, um, you know, the nun truckers, the sort of things like that that put, people put in boxes. Mm. Um, and because of the, the advent and the sophistication of air shipping, um all this stuff was sitting by and mm. suddenly they realised, hang on, we've got to plug a hole. And so rather than do it gently or generally, they've been disruptive to everybody. Okay. Um, so, right. so, yeah. so the sea mail containers that are in transit, mm -hmm. um, they will be processed, but they're going to take like a very long time because they're going to go through everything. Um, mm. So yes, just, 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 a, just don't do it. One of those, it's airmail all crystal. the way. Absolutely, please. <laughs> please, please do it for Australia. Hey, uh, you know, how serious is this situation? Because we see lots of uh, alarming headlines about, uh, you know, the whole eastern seaboard of Australia in a, in a tense and, and difficult situation with, uh, you know, with excessive rainfall and, and flooding. And I saw some shocking pictures from Melbourne on the weekend, people's car, you know, jumping out of cars that were flooded up to their roofs. Uh, but obviously that's passed. But um, what's happening now, Dave, across New South Wales? Is there another storm sort of coming through? Well, it's not just passed, it's continuing. And so the, the massive storm front that blew through last week um, that was predicted to be very nasty, it was, and it brought uh, many flood rescues from metropolitan Sydney, um, from the Hunter Valley, uh, and from the northwest New South Wales, different, uh, same weather system, but in different effects. So it's isolated many communities. Ningen, Weewar, um, Coonabarabran, uh, all out the far northwest of New South Wales. Um, currently, the weather watch is further south at Gundagai, uh, where the dog sits on the tucker box famously. Oh, yeah. Does. Yes. Um, may, that may well go underwater in the, uh, the coming hours because the, uh, the water coming down, the catchment there. Um, is seemingly putting that community in threat. So they're on uh, current watch there at this moment. Mm. And that weather system is coming across and moving north and east. So the entire area south coast of New South Wales, up to Sydney and north, um, I think the Port Macquarie is on current watch for continued flooding. Now, this is because Sydney, there has been so much rain for the last two years of of that La Nina thing that has persisted, which we're in year three of now, yeah. um, means that the, the ground is holding so much water it cannot hold any more. And so anything that falls is simply going on top of that. And mm. anything that falls downstream on top of that is simply going on top of that. So the reason it's becoming fast in areas that, that you may have seen where people are being rescued from cars is because it is so fast and so unpredictable that the water will fall and generally it's like, oh, it might take a week for this creek to fill up here. Mm. Um, it'll come up in three hours. Um, the area I'm going to this evening for dinner at Mullumbimby um, to go down and sort of carry on was doing stuff there for Blues Fest earlier in the year. Both mm. days that I went there earlier in the year, it's flooded the next day. Mm. Second time is the day that Byron Bay went under. Um, the, the, the general downtown area there was a metre underwater, which had never happened before. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> Because of this water falling in areas that haven't happened before and then pushing through. So the same, it's raining there at the moment. Who knows what's going to happen there tomorrow. Um, but across New South Wales, yes, there are military helicopters stationed at various um, parts and they're constantly being moved, as well as the SES have got their super high um, unimogs that can go through floodwaters and rescue people and things like that. Mm. They have worked very hard, certainly past the, the previous disasters that we've had. Um, but uh, the bushfire um, services of Victoria and New South Wales have had 13 new volunteers each in each state, and I think the SES SES are announcing today the emergency service volunteers are up uh, about a thousand in Victoria and 600 in New South Wales, which is fantastic. And they're they've broadened from just being you know the Jaffa overall people who sort of block things and everything else, but they are now much more responsive to people's skill sets. So mm. going to those community environments, they know their communities. You know, they've got a nurse as part of the team doing first aid. Yeah. You know, they've, got a, they've got an office worker doing the operation stuff. You know, they've got the tree boys doing, you know, the tree lopping and things like that. So they're much more, they believe, match fit to be able to deal with the ever-present local issues. Mm. You can't move and respond to things. It's, 
the, I think the big lessons of, uh, of what's come is everything is local. You've got to work with what you've got locally. And whether it's guys and jet skis, kayaks, you know, tinnies, horses, whatever it may be, it gets you out of harm's way, then that is at your disposal to be able to do that. Mm. And and we've learned that and we've grown. Um, but yes, expecting the worst um, at the moment, to be honest, because the weather is just continuing. Mm. New yeah. South Wales, Sydney has Sydney already had its wettest ever year on record by November. Now, what that meant? Oh, no, not by, by by the end of September. I was going to so say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, not quite there yet. Meant. Yeah. Well, yeah. by by. So we still I have three more months, you know, or a couple more. A couple more months to go, and mm. it's going to be insane. The amount of water going to fall, mm. and so the record's going to be blown out of the top. So you've got dams that are constantly constantly releasing water mm. um, uh, into catchment areas, um, which is putting people on heightened alert and putting the streams in a much faster flowing mode as well. And so, yeah, it's um, it's constantly be alert. And we've been on holidays, of course, uh, school holidays here the last two or three weeks, mm-hmm. all over Australia, South Australia still, mm-hmm. um, and ACT still. And so there's still, you know, concern uh, for that. Um, but, yeah, it means the next few months with what people are dealing with, how are we going to survive this one as well? It's not getting any better. It's just going to continue. Yeah, it's rotten, rotten, horrible, horrible situation. And, uh, you know, it's like you say, it's three years now. <laughs> Must feel like 30 to some Sydney siders and uh, people who are getting fed up with the wet. And you've got to love evening weather forecasting. This is what I love. Mm-hmm. How now the business is so diversified in weather forecasting, with commercial weather forecasting, not just, you know, for government or anything else, for media, but organisations. And so there's, there's many more forecasters. So it means that you almost have, much the same as in politics, you have the right wing and the left wing, mm. weather forecasters. So you have the extreme guys over here who have this belief system and the tolerant people over here. And so, of course, the extreme guys are already out there saying, oh, this is year three, but we think that we could well go to four years of La Nina in a row. And so that thought process is going through as well. People think, mm, this might just keep going. And so where you treat this as a one in 100, one in 200, one in 200, it's happening every year, mm. um, five years in a row, three mm. years, four years. So it's... It's very intense in that respect, and it puts everything, um, certainly the way we're preparing for the future, I think. Mm. Better for everybody because we have to build homes better. We have to make them waterproof. We have mm-hmm. to make them floodproof. Mm. We have to make them energy efficient, and we have to make them, you know, because it's funny, isn't it, how we're always making homes childproof. Right. And, you know, disabled ready and things like that. And it's just like, but hang on, we're not fit for purpose with where we live. And so there's a sudden realignment with that which is great mm. very encouraging well it, it is good and, yeah. and we do need to change change tack a bit i mean i suppose in the past uh, the big threat was fires right but uh, but now it's rain you know fires and floods and it used to be a cyclical thing mm. and drought mm. um we'd get them in repeated patterns and so it would be understood that you know mm. you lived in the bush you worked on the farm you knew you had good years and bad years and you worked a good years bad years cycle on the previous a statistical data that you had to work with for the previous, you know, 100 years, 120 years, whatever it was in, in your particular area or state of support. Mm. Um, but what we've proved, certainly in the last 10, 15 years, is that's all out of the window um, with, with any form of predictability. Remember, some time ago, we were building desalination plants at great cost to the community. There's one just next to Gold Coast Airport here, mm. um, one in Sydney near the airport at Kernel there, um, every mainland capital built one because we were in drought to the point that there was, we were down to 28% or 22% water in the dams mm. and water rationing and things like that. And mm. that to drought proofers. Ever since then, it's like washing your car. It guarantees it's going to rain. Build a desalination <laughs> plant. Guarantee the end to the drought. <laughs> so right. everyone, those smart people, you've got to encourage them to think, what are we going to do to stop this? And then that way the universal or the great spirit enables us to rebalance and find mm. our feet for the next generation. Yeah, well, well, um, you know, it's uh, it's alarming to watch uh, what's going on and it must be um, 
Yeah, it's, it, it must be really draining and, and tough for all the emergency services too because it's like every week, you know, that, that there's new measures and, and concerns. But I guess it's spring and maybe when we get to December, things might improve. Uh, but, but this well, system... Well, storm season and cyclone season, and they say yeah. there are more cyclones now because Darwin, that's what I said, it was 100 and... No, it was 137 kilometre winds in a storm I had yesterday. Oh. And a ridiculous amount of rain up mm. to 100 mil. And so um, the storm season has started in earnest um, yes. up there. Yes. And they think there will be 100 more cyclones this year than normal because oh, of really? the way the, 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 the low pressure systems are doing their thing and bumping up against everybody else the way mm. they do. Okay. Um, and hitting the diet polo when it comes past your place and all of that. So it's just creating this, again, complex environment of instability. Mm. Um, yeah. And so that's all we're dealing with, instability, constantly. Yeah. yeah. Well, the whole world's like that, so I guess the weather's follow, following suit, hey? <laughs> I don't know. Hey, I hear, I hear that Novak Djokovic uh, might just sneak into the Aussie Open. Have you heard much about this next year, the, the Melbourne Open? Has he been vaccinated? Well, no, but but it's it, like I see that the opposition uh, party is um, is uh, is saying that um, that you know he should be perhaps uh, let in that perhaps Australia can relax things a wee bit, you know. Uh, who who was talking on air? It was um, it was a chap called Dan Tehan. Uh, Dan Tehan used to be the trade minister uh, in the previous uh, slow mo government. Um, <laughs> slow mo, yeah. Decade of neglect. Yeah. Um, and Dan is a very good diplomat and able to speak carefully and positively on the things um, that he has uh, to speak about on behalf of Australia. I don't know if Dan would be generally supported by Australians who suffered, particularly in Melbourne. Right. Um, Perhaps so a lone, still, um, yes, a loner on that front. If it, if it was Dan Andrews, the Premier of Victoria... The, the man they dubbed Dirty Dan, mm. who the world's longest lockdown, um, I would give it some bearing. Because Dan, despite the fact that he was the most hated premier in mm. the country, mm -hmm. and still despised by a great deal of the Melbourne and Victorian population, it looks as though he's going to walk through the next state election unopposed because the Liberal Party are just such in disarray in Victoria. Okay. Um, and can't contest any candidate. So it's like even as bad as it's been for them, what choice have they got? So it's a very interesting environment in that. Mm. Uh, whereas other states, South Australia and all their free settlers and their, the proper way they say South Australia, they, when they, their state government did just as good as everyone else during the lockdown, but they were a bit upset because they were spending too much time over one thing. Flip them out instantly. It's not like that in the mm. other states. So it's quite interesting um, the way people get punished and persecuted, but no, damn, Tim, I'm sorry. Okay. No. Not, not, not a great... Not credible. No. no not credible. No, okay, so no, what about actually, what about Chris yeah, Kenny? He's got, he's got the other wall. Oh, come on. This chap. What's, has he got oh, any credibility? No, why? <laughs> His brother has credibility. Um, his, his, his brother is, uh, is, is now a professor at the, uh, at the ANU and used to be um, the, the, the conservative uh, journalist of the family. Chris works for uh, Rupert. And uh, Chris is the fantastic Australian journalist who did the documentary that appeared on Sky News after dark, criticising the ABC on their 90th birthday and tried to oh <laughs> bring the ABC down in every possible <laughs> way that he possibly could have found any negativity uh, to ensure and could not get anyone from the ABC <laughs> to talk to him about that. Um, so, yes. Well, apparently he said, he said, just let the bloke in. Let the bloke in, meaning Novak Djokovic. So that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, look, fantastic. We're only tied to our point of view and our support. You know, both, but, and I'll buy Rupert's papers um, for, for that purpose on the weekend. But I don't consume it digitally. I buy it in the old form that it's meant to be. It, just, it feels more Rupert. <laughs> feels more Rupert. Very old school. <laughs> I, like, I, I know what you mean. You touch him and feel him. And, yeah. and so when you yell and you go, and you can touch and feel a bit more connection. Yeah, that's right. The, 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 the internet thing.
I totally agree. Hey, I've got a great song lined up by Mental as Anything to take us out today, but what else do you want to touch on? So we've got a couple of minutes more, um, uh, Dave, if you can want. I, can I, I saw this thing, I thought it was amazing the other day, that someone had the uh, the audacity to suggest that, that people should drive around with an R plate on their car. Oh, yeah. Um, so you know how you have an L plate oh, or yes. a P plate? Mm-hmm. You know, learner, P for provisional. So, you know, you know, you didn't suppose anything else. Uh, someone suggested from uh, a trauma organisation um, and not belittling what they do, certainly, but it was an interesting message that they put out mm. uh, that they suggested people put an R plate on their car to suggest that people be careful because they're recovering from a recent road traumatic event. Oh. Major traffic crash <laughs> or something like that. Right. Which right. I, well, I thought that'd be great. Maybe you should have a whole collection of letters that represent different things. Of how you're you feeling when you get into a vehicle. <laughs> I love or, it. Or it's one of those ones, where, you know, when you touch them <laughs> and the colour changes depending on your mood. Yes. And so it's one of those things that the government issues you and sticks on your car and it changes colour depending on your driving performance or your mood <laughs> or whether or not you're being a bit of a dick that day <laughs> or whatever it may be. I like that it. can change from, you know, D for Duke, you know, W for Wally. Yeah. You know, yeah, you're right. You know those right. terms here. People, people adopt them, or if enough people scream the same word mm. for behavioural patterns on the road, that 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 letter would come up, and everyone cheer. And it would be, road driving would be much more positive participatory support. <laughs> why not? Why not put? So if you see someone with an R plate, so you have to kind of not tailgate them, be kind to them. So why not put a big sign on the back of your car saying? Take it easy on me. I'm, I'm freaked out to be back behind the wheel. Or you know, I mean, something shorter, obviously, and something way more pithy. But I'm just thinking, like, you know, you'd, we'd have to know, wouldn't we? All these. I mean, I like this. Ah, uh, recovering, is is kind of good. But what you could be a recovering meth addict. <laughs> you could be. I know. You could be recovering from that, anything. You know. I've spoken before about, you know, giving someone a K plate for being a Karen. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> Karen Plate. Wouldn't, there you go. That, 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 I, I would pos- that's what you've got to go. I think you could have a lot of fun with this. I'd actually be quite, I think it'd be hilarious. You could have all sorts of different well, things. Could, what would you do? Great, but we may come at, well, I don't know. I just don't want to come, to, come in contact with the law in another positive way in the, uh, the, the, the any community. Yeah. You know, mm. America particularly, you never want to be pulled over by the police. Um, but, uh, but, but that. <laughs> Especially um, not in that Queensland. That was fascinating. God. The other thing I thought was fascinating because Sydney, you know, you talked before about people. Oh, we've only got. Oh, we've got very. We've, we've got. Oh, I'm going to have to restrict this to thirty seconds. That's right. Listen, you can do that. Sydney, they they pulled out all the old bus stops and the billboards and everything else, and they they did the whole street furniture contract. Yes. Right. So these new billboards and things and bus stops, and, and it was late because of COVID. And, you know, it was a disaster. One of, another one of those disasters for Australia. Yeah. For Sydney. But now they've put them all in and they're fantastic and there's some that are so good that you have to walk on the road to get around them. <laughs> They've taken up the whole footpath. Oh, well. It's skinny and you think, yeah, baby. <laughs> so that was, that's fantastic. The other thing I thought that was going oh, to on. Australian soil. Yep. Got to Northern watch Marianas out. versus China for football. Go to Northern Marianas. Those boys went large. Okay. Being beaten 11 0 and they were winners. Love your work. Love your work. Fantastic time. You too. Enjoy Enjoy your week. Enjoy that fancy lunch, hey. I, I'm, I still would, uh, rain and all, I'd love to be there with you, uh, uh, you know, sort of near Noosa. Beautiful. Anywhere over this side is beautiful. It's stunning. It's not raining. You enjoy it. You enjoy it, Dave. Thanks so much again for this week.